Here it is. I think we've started. Vocab week three. Hello, Indio High School. It's Mr. Bowman. Here we go. Ten words. I don't know how many bad jokes are going to happen. Rambling? Oh, you betcha. There's going to be some rambling. Here we go. So the words this week, I got to tell you, they're a little tougher than in previous weeks, but pretty good. We've got sketch, abolish, abscond, abhor, apocalypse, coalesce, doppelganger. Oh, I love that word. Truculent, limpid, and adept. All good words, all very usable. And when you'll see around, even if they don't seem familiar to you now, although I'm sure a couple of them do. All right, sketch. Every week we're going to try to have a word that is a an academic activity, something you might see in like a writing prompt or something like that. Sketch is this week's. So to sketch is a verb. It's to roughly and quickly describe or portray something. Now, you'll often hear the word sketch in reference to drawing, to sketch a picture. Uh, but it doesn't have to be drawing. It can be writing, drawing, sculpting, speaking. It can be anything that is just roughly and quickly described. Now, it can also be used as a noun in order to label the thing that was sketched. So here is my sketch, right? Here's just this quick thing. Comedy skits are sometimes called sketches. They're just a quick idea that they're putting out there. It's not like a full scene or a movie, really. Uh, so to sketch something, sketch me an idea of what it was you did this weekend. And then you just give me a quick kind of rundown of it. Anyway. Coalesce, also a verb, is to combine or to come together or to form one perfect and complete whole. So if something manages to coalesce, it all comes together and combines perfectly and evenly and smoothly into one new thing. Sometimes you have different ideas in your head and they coalesce into one perfect, brilliant idea and you have a great plan. Sometimes you have different theories and they coalesce. Sometimes you get people together. There's all these different people in a group and then they coalesce and they become one unified new group. So that's to coalesce. Doppelganger. Oh, do I love this word. It's a noun. It comes from German. Germany uh, is really cool in a linguistic sense in that they have a lot of words that we don't have English equivalents for and they kind of give us these words. Well, really, we take them. So a doppelganger is a noun. It's a double or a counterpart to a person. Here's the idea. The idea is that somewhere in the world is your doppelganger, this person wandering around, living their own life, who is just like someone else. All right. So you, in theory, have a doppelganger. There's someone walking around who seems just like you. They look like you. They talk like you. They do their hair like you. Everything. Now, I have seen my own doppelganger. This is a true thing. It's when I was in Denver. I saw this guy walking around, and he looked exactly like me. I don't mean a little bit like me. Like I had a twin walking around with the same style and dress and everything. Then I've actually seen in ads and stuff quite a few people who look just like me, enough that my parents would like cut out an ad and say, is this you? And that's my parents doing it. So doppelgangers certainly seem to be a thing. All right, limpid. Limpid is an adjective. It means clear and transparent, not cloudy or foggy. Think about something that is perfectly clear, like glass that is flawless or clear water. You look into a, a pond or a pool. Sometimes you'll see this. It'll be a pretty deep pool, but it seems really shallow because you can see the bottom so clearly. That is limpid water. That is a limpid pool. Now, you can use it to describe something visual, like glass or water, or you can use it for something not visual, something like a sound. If someone has a limpid voice, it is perfectly clear. Or an idea that is made perfectly clear. Oh, it's very limpid. Although those are less common usages, to be totally honest. All right, truculent. To be truculent, it, it's an adjective. It means you are excessively fierce, cruel, and brutal aggressively hostile and harsh. Sometimes a student will come in with a truculent attitude. Say, good morning, how are you? And they're like, oh, how dare you? And they hate you and they want to fight all the time. I have a few students who are actually rather truculent on a daily basis. Some people are just that way. They're just truculent. But more often than not, people just have a moment where they feel truculent or they're acting truculent. It's a, a brief thing that they're just, oh, they're just so angry suddenly. Now, adept, this is a word I really love. It's an adjective. It's having knowledge of or being skilled at something in particular. Now, you almost always follow the word adept with the word at. I am adept at whatever, ice skating. I am adept at telling jokes. I am adept at reading fast, whatever it is. I am adept in World War II history. 
So that'd be a time when you're not using at, when it's a, a, a knowledge base with a category you might use in. But it's always going to have some kind of uh, conjunction coming after it, okay? Anyway, so there you go, adept. Now, we're coming up to our ab and app. Now, adept is not this. Adept is AD. So we're talking about AB and AP. These are Latin prefixes. So if you see it at the beginning of the word, pretty much always, not quite, but pretty much always, like about wouldn't work for this, but it's going to mean away. It's adding the meaning away to something else, okay? So we have here abolish. Abolish is a verb. It's to do away with, to get rid of, to ban, or to make a void. The most kind of famous example from a history class where we say it most often might be something like when the United States abolished slavery, right? We got rid of slavery. We got, we did away with it. You can use it for things that are less enormous than that, but it's a very strong word to use. I have abolished a poisonous person from my life. I had whatever. Uh, there was someone I knew who they were terrible, so I abolished them from my life. They're no longer in my life. I've gotten rid of them, right? I have abolished excess sugar in my diet. That's a pretty trivial thing, but you know, if it is a complete, I have totally gotten rid of it, then you have abolished it, okay? Uh, to abscond, this is a verb as well, is to escape suddenly and secretly. It's usually used to indicate running away from the law or to avoid punishment. I absconded from the room, like they were looking for me, and I was in trouble, so I got out of there. I absconded. So to abscond is to get away, right? To abscond, away. Uh, abolish, to do away with. So you can see that, that ab meaning way things coming in. Uh, abhor. To abhor something is a verb. It's to regard it with total disgust or hate. If you abhor something, you absolutely need to avoid it. You hate it more than you can than you can describe. You abhor whatever mushrooms. You abhor that's a very minor one. You abhor intolerance. You abhor people who enjoy country music. I don't know whatever it is, right? Um, nature. You may hear this in your physics classes. Uh, or science classes, nature abhors a vacuum. Meaning if it's possible to not have a vacuum, nature would prefer that. That's why it sucks things away and evenly distributes matter. Uh, nature abhors a vacuum. So away in this case, meaning you need to be away from that thing. You abhor this thing. I must be away from it. Now, apocalypse has app in it. You may not be quite sure why it's having to do with away. You've probably heard the word apocalypse, if only because of science fiction films where they take place in a post-apocalyptic society. It's a noun. It's an enormous and widespread disaster. Apocalyptic would be the uh, ad the adjectival form of it, the adjective form of it. So an enormous and widespread disaster. I mean enormous, like everyone's getting wiped out kind of enormous, right? So if you're wondering how it relates to away, the word calypso in, in uh, Latin means paradise. There's also characters in uh, various mythologies named calypso, and there's a dance called calypso, on and on. So, you know, it's for paradise. It's something very wonderful. To be completely away from paradise, the opposite side of paradise, is a disaster, right? Complete ruin. Hence, apocalypse is to be away from paradise. It's to be very, very bad and unpleasant. All right, that's it. That's all the words. That's why there's nothing on this slide. That's everything. So that's all you need to know. Do your best. Good luck. I know you'll do well. Get ready for that quiz.